As with all assets, the price of a crypto is determined by supply and demand. And besides block rewards, staking rewards, and inflation, one of the biggest sources of supply in crypto is selling by early investors. According to the first annual report by Token Unlocks, over $100 billion of crypto will be vested to early investors in the next few years. The resulting sell pressure could crash the price of these cryptos. That's why today I'm going to summarize Token Unlocks' first annual report, reveal which coins and tokens will see the most sell pressure, and tell you how this could affect the crypto market. In their own words, quote, Token Unlocks was created to address the transparency issues present in many crypto projects. These projects may not adhere to vesting schedules outlined in their white papers and may not readily provide access to project data. And never forget that, folks. Now, the authors go on to explain that this first annual report covers a few token unlocks from 2022 and provides some insight into what impact token unlocks could have in 2023. The authors stress that nothing in this report is financial advice. It's purely educational content, just like this video, as it happens. Now, the second section of the report provides an explanation of what token unlocks are. Token unlocks, or vesting schedules, tell you when the initial supply of a coin or token will be released and to which category of investor. There are many different types of vesting methods, though the most important are linear and cliff vesting. As the name suggests, linear vesting is where the coin or token is unlocked gradually over time, typically every time a new block is added to the blockchain. By contrast, a cliff vesting schedule is where a fixed supply of the coin or token is unlocked at a predetermined date. For example, 10% on the 25th of December. Now, linear vesting schedules are often better for the price action of a coin or token because any selling by early investors or the team is spread out over a longer period. Conversely, cliff vesting schedules often result in lots of short-term sell pressure, which can crash the price of the coin or token in question. That said, sometimes cliff vesting has no impact on price. An example that comes to mind is Solana, whose sole coin essentially had a single vesting cliff. The entire initial supply basically unlocked in January 2021, but Sol's price was somehow fine. More about that mystery in the description. Anyways, the third section of the report gives a recap of what happened to the crypto market in 2022. Obviously, the authors talk about how the market crashed and discuss key events like Terra's collapse and FTX's bankruptcy. However, they argue that token unlocks also played a role in the crash. The authors reveal that the Token Unlocks platform launched in July last year and currently tracks vesting schedules for over 140 crypto projects and protocols, with a total market cap of $23 billion. Most of these projects are in the DeFi, blockchain, presumably layer ones, DAO and metaverse categories. The authors admit that $23 billion is a drop in the bucket compared to crypto's total market cap, but they seem to imply that the team plans on eventually covering them all. If I understand correctly, the authors note that they only analyze token unlocks of 38 of the 140 cryptos for this section of the report. They also explain that the total value of the vesting coins and tokens for these 38 projects and protocols fell by 90% from over $140 billion to just $14 billion. This was, of course, primarily due to the decline in prices. What's odd is that the authors don't specify which cryptos they're talking about here. In any case, they estimate that $23.5 billion of the $140 billion market cap entered circulation in 2022, i.e. this is the value of the coins and tokens that were unlocked. They estimate that more than 70% of this $23.5 billion of unlocked coins and tokens was sold on the open market. Not surprisingly, the authors found that more than 60% of the unlocked coins and tokens had cliff vesting schedules, whereas fewer than 40% had linear vesting schedules. This underscores the fact that coins and tokens with cliff vesting experience more sell pressure than those with linear vesting. I should note that there is more to tokenomics than vesting and unlocks, and 
You can learn about the other tokenomic factors using the link in the description. Now, the fourth section of the report focuses on how exactly crypto projects and protocols vest their coins and tokens. The authors say there are three main methods – vesting from a regular wallet, vesting from a multi-sig wallet, and vesting using smart contracts. This time, the authors analyzed 31 cryptos. As you can see, the majority of crypto projects and protocols used smart contracts. Some used a combination of wallets and smart contracts, and a few used wallets only. Multi-sig wallets were the least popular option. This makes sense given that they're not always easy to set up or send transactions from. Now, this infographic shows you the full list of crypto projects and protocols that the authors analyzed for this section, and I must say that it is fascinating. The orange lines are for smart contract addresses, the red lines are for multi-sig wallets, and the blue lines are for regular wallets. Now, the three cryptos that stick out the most are the Sandbox, which is the only project on the list that uses multi-sig wallets for vesting, ApeCoin, and Lido DAO, which are the only two projects on the list that use regular wallets for vesting. The authors note that ApeCoin uses over 150 wallets for its vesting. I must admit that this is a bit concerning because vesting from a regular wallet means that whoever owns the wallet can move the coins or tokens in that wallet whenever they want. This is harder to do with multisigs and impossible to do with smart contracts because allocations are predetermined. Good thing most crypto projects are using smart contracts. If you want evidence of the possibility that using a regular wallet for vesting results in more sell pressure, look no further than the next two charts in the report. It appears that vesting from regular wallets was much larger than smart contracts in 2022 in percentage terms, though this could just be a coincidence, but um, <clears throat> probably not. Now, the fifth section of the report breaks down how vested coins and tokens are distributed. The authors group coin or token recipients into four categories – the team, the treasury, early investors, and the community. The authors analyzed 44 cryptos for this section, and a list is again provided. As with the infographic of wallets used for vesting, the infographic for vesting distribution is intriguing. It suggests that crypto projects and protocols which vest most of their coins and tokens to teams and investors have higher market caps than those which vest to treasuries and communities. The authors believe this is because allocating more coins and tokens to the team and investors increases liquidity. Allocating more tokens to investors also tends to attract more investors. Now, my only comment is that not all investors are created equally. There's a difference between retail investors and VCs. Now, what's cool is that the authors went as far as creating a pie chart which shows the average vesting allocation for the 44 crypto projects and protocols with market cap considered. The average vesting breakdown is 31% to the team, 25% to the treasury, 10% to investors, and 34% to the community. Now, the authors caution that although this is the average vesting allocation, it may not be the ideal vesting allocation for most crypto projects and protocols. In addition to the underweight investor allocation, the vesting allocation that works best likely varies from project to project, as suggested by this image. Now, the sixth section is similarly interesting because it touches on the changes to tokenomics for a few major cryptocurrencies. The authors cover Bitcoin's taproot upgrade, the Ethereum merge, and possible changes to Cosmos's inflation schedule, which has been a point of contention for Atom holders. As expected, most of the tokenomic changes to major crypto projects made them more deflationary. This makes sense because if the supply of a coin or token stays the same or decreases, while demand stays the same or increases, then prices tend to go up. Ethereum's fee burning being the best example. On that note, you can find out what's been going on with Ethereum lately using the link in the description. Now, the seventh section is a juicy one. That's because it's about the impact of vesting on the prices of coins and tokens in 2022. As you might have guessed, the price of a coin or token crashes more than 15% on average just before a vesting cliff. Funnily enough, prices tend to go sideways after the actual unlock. 
However, what's annoying is that the authors didn't specify which cryptos they used in this part of the report. And what's even more annoying is that the authors specify that they measured the drop in price against BTC because it's a quote, fair point of view. This presumably means that this 15% figure is not in USD. Again, using BTC as the baseline measure of value, the authors found that coins and tokens have a 27% chance of falling by 5% prior to a vesting cliff, a 20% chance of falling 10% prior to a vesting cliff, and a 6% chance of falling 30% prior to a vesting cliff. Hopefully, they do this calculation against USD next time. Anyhow, the eighth section goes over a few of the largest coin and token unlocks in 2022. The authors highlight the Sandbox, LuxRare, Axie Infinity, and Immutable X as outliers. The authors explain that they chose these cryptos specifically because of all the social media buzz around the massive unlocks. They start with the Sandbox's Sand token, which, surprise, surprise, has an aggressive cliff vesting schedule. The authors found that Sand's price often collapsed after the vesting cliff date. While they acknowledge that Sand is highly correlated to ETH, they point out that Sand experienced additional sell pressure. It's a similar story for LuxRare, whose Lux token has a cliff vesting schedule on top of an aggressive linear vesting schedule. Similarly to Sand, the authors acknowledge that Lux's price action was initially correlated to BTC, but was likewise suppressed by additional sell pressure in the end. As for Axie Infinity, its AXS token also has an aggressive cliff vesting schedule. The authors again acknowledge that AXS was in a downtrend at the time of its biggest vesting cliffs due to broader crypto market factors. However, they found AXS underperformed ETH after the vesting cliff, suggesting selling. And finally, we have Immutable X, whose IMX token has an aggressive linear vesting schedule with a massive vesting cliff at the end of 2022. Lo and behold, IMX crashed in both USD and ETH terms and Immutable X's co-founder subsequently announced a tokenomic intervention to prevent more sell pressure. Yikes. You can learn more about Immutable X using the link in the description. Now, the eighth and final section of the report discusses the outlook for the crypto market in the context of coin and token vesting schedules. The authors specify that they analyzed the vesting schedules for the top 300 cryptocurrencies by market cap for this section, which is awesome. The authors estimate that there is around $102 billion of the top 300 coins and tokens waiting to vest, hence the statistic at the start of this video. This might sound like a lot, but the authors found that 82% of the value of the top 300 cryptos has already vested, meaning there's only 18% left to unlock. Now, this is significant because it suggests that coins and tokens which have already vested most of their supply are more likely to have a higher market cap. This is logical considering more coins and tokens means more market cap, but the lack of selling from new supply could mean more positive price action. The catch is that the 18% statistic only applies to market cap. The authors note that 96 of the top 300 cryptos have less than 25% left to vest. 50 have 25 to 50% left to vest, 45 have 50 to 75% left to vest, and 15 have 75 to 100% left to vest. Unfortunately, the authors don't say which crypto has the most left to vest. Fortunately, though, the authors do say which cryptos have the most left to vest in dollar terms. The first is XRP at almost 18 billion. The second is Filecoin at almost 5 billion. The third is Ethereum's Optimism at roughly 3.7 billion. The fourth is Chainlink at almost 3 billion, and the fifth is Bybit's BitDAO at 2.5 billion. The report concludes with the authors predicting that many crypto projects and protocols will be forced to sell their coins and tokens in 2023 to secure the funding they need to stay afloat. Surprisingly, though, the authors do not showcase which coins and tokens will see the most aggressive vesting in the next year. At least we know which crypto projects and protocols have the most developers. More about that report in the description. I digress. For what it's worth, the authors promise that they won't be going anywhere and will continue to push crypto projects and protocols to be more transparent about their tokenomics. They reiterate that their mission 
is to help build a better crypto industry. I reckon we have that in common, chaps. So, this brings me to the big question, and that's what Token Unlocks' vesting report means for the crypto market. I suppose the more accurate question should be what this means for all the coins and tokens that still have lots of supply left to vest. The Token Unlocks report suggests that there are four key takeaways here. The first is to watch out for any cryptos with vesting cliffs and to take note of when these vesting cliffs will occur. Vesting details for most major cryptocurrencies can be found on Masari. If you can't find them there, you'll have to check the white paper or check out our videos about the projects or protocols in question. Ideally, of course, the coin or token you're interested in will have a linear vesting cliff. This is by no means a deal breaker, but it is something to keep in mind. The last thing you want is to buy the dip, thinking you're near the bottom, only to get dumped on by early investors and the team at some later date. Now, the second takeaway is to watch out for any cryptos which use regular wallets for vesting. This information is harder to find, but it ultimately depends on the blockchain explorer being used. Vesting addresses for ERC20 tokens on Ethereum are easy to spot on Etherscan under the Top Holders tab. If you see a large wallet with no paper icon, chances are it's a regular vesting wallet. If you see a little paper icon next to a top address, chances are it's a vesting smart contract. Ideally, the coin or token you're interested in will use a smart contract instead of a regular wallet for vesting. The third takeaway is to watch out for any cryptos which didn't allocate much of their supply to the team or to investors. Recall that a healthy allocation to investors brings in more investors. Meanwhile, more supply for the team means that the team is incentivized to increase the value of the coin or token. The caveat is that the ideal token allocation varies from project to project as per the findings of the authors. As such, you'll have to assess which distribution makes the most sense. So long as the supply isn't heavily directed towards any particular group, the coin or token you're interested in is likely fine. The fourth takeaway is the most important, and that is to watch out for any coins or tokens which can't improve their tokenomics. There don't seem to be many of these because most cryptos are upgradable, but the main thing to watch out for is whether this upgradability can increase value. DeFi protocols come to mind here. Holders of popular DeFi protocol tokens could, and probably will, eventually vote to direct a portion of all protocol fees to the buyback and burn of their native token. Ideally, the coin or token you're interested in will have the potential for this kind of value capture. But again, this is just a sliver of the tokenomics part of analyzing a crypto project. There are other elements you should analyze too, and if you need help with that, then you can check out our video about how to research cryptocurrencies. The link to that bad boy will be down in the description. Enjoy, folks, and thank you so much for watching. Thank <laughs> you.